All righty. This is more addendums. We got a whole lot of addendums coming in relation to the Apache Labs Anon. Uh, what I'm going to show you is how I set up uh, a couple things that I, I don't think I talked about in the MIDI controller or regarding using a MIDI controller on Thetis. Now, Thetis is in uh, MRXPS as well. Uh, very cool feature. They have MIDI capabilities. So what you see, and I'll just, I know this is going to be a little redundant, but this is the MIDI controller you see on the screen in the lower left-hand corner of the spectrum. That is a Korg Nano Controller. Now, I believe there's over 60 functions that I can, that I have mapped, which basically control the main GUI. Um, everything that's on the main GUI, pretty much not, not everything. Uh, if I could, if I wanted to, I could. <laughs> it's, um, but everything that's important to me, I have mapped on the controller. So I pretty much don't have to touch the software except for when I change frequencies. Uh, so I just click through the band on the pan adapter, uh, with a mouse and all of the controls I have mapped on the controller. Now I'm going to sh give you an idea, uh, show you how to do that quickly here. Uh, let me get over to the other screen. So what you have here is a picture of the MIDI controller. So what I did was I grabbed a picture off their website. And if you're, if you're handy with Photoshop, now, if, if you've got a 3D printer, you could probably do a 3D print overlay that would go right over this thing um, and label all of these functions. The, the issue I have is that there are so many functions on here that I have mapped. I can't remember where everything is. So I, I, I use this. I have an image of the configure, configured controller that I keep on one of my displays. And as I'm learning uh, where everything is, I use that as a reference. Eventually I will get it. <laughs> I will remember where everything is. So what I do is, what I do is I bring this image into Photoshop and then I like over this area right here, um, I will create a black box. And then over all of this area, a black box and I go through and I put in and I'll show you what it looks like in a second. I put in everything that is mapped in relation to the buttons. I line them all up and same down here. I'll put in like uh, run a black rectangular box and I'll put the text in that box and you can match the color to the controller. Right. So. Um, that's how I, how I did that. And I keep that on the screen. Uh, it could be a problem if you don't have a lot of monitors, uh, you could also print it out. Uh, but I like it on the monitor. I, I didn't want to print it. So, um, that's how I do that. So let's, uh, really quick, I'm going to get over and I'm going to show you something in Thetis, something that caught me. So when I put up the Thetis configuration video, I thought this stuff was saved. All of the mapping is saved in the database. It is not. So let me show you how to save your mapping. Because I'm telling you, it took me ooh, an hour and a half to remap this thing. It was a pain in the arse. So I lost all my mapping. So if you go to setup, uh, scroll across the top um, tabs, hit cat control, you'll see configure MIDI. So if you open this up, Okay, these are all the things that I have mapped on the controller. Pretty crazy, isn't it? <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Um, so what you want to do is you want to click on Manage Mappings. And you want to save this. And you can export as well. So if you click Save Mapping. Um, like what I did was uh, click on export mapping. Uh, you can click this. Make sure that's checked. Come on now. There we go. Done. And then export your mapping, right? 
So what I do is I saved my mappings, save mapping as, uh, I put in uh, a not, let's put in a non MIDI map and hit save. And that will save your mappings. Now, the default location, I'm not sure exactly where that's going to go. So let's do an export. So I'm going to export this one. So click done. And this will open a window to tell you where to send it to. So you'll see it's already in here, a Korg mapping. So that's what I use is the export. Uh, because it gives me a choice as to where to put it. I don't like things just going into thin air. <laughs> so uh, that's how you do that. So let's get over to the other screen. Let me pull up. Um, see, what have we got here? So it's going to be this one. So I can show you uh, what the Photoshop image looks like. Let's go over to pan adapter. So this is the photoshopped image. So you can see the the black boxes I put in and I just put text in to label everything. Uh, tell me what they all do. Uh, so that's basically it. The most important thing I wanted to share here is back up everything. Uh, make sure if you go through the hassle and you run one of these controllers, which is super cool. It's in my wheelhouse. I'm a tactile person. I love my buttons and knobs. Um, I, I don't know if I could live without this now that I have it uh, because I ride the AGC if I don't have the auto AGC on and I ride the volume and I can initiate pretty much all the functions and control all the functions. Um, both receivers on RX1 and RX2 uh, change bands, change modes, uh, filter, uh, the filters on it, um, noise reductions, automatic notch filters. Uh, Multi-RX, diversity, I mean, you name it, I can do it all uh, right from this controller. I don't have to fuss, fuss around in the software. It's all at the touch of a button. My left hand pretty much stays on this controller when I'm running it. So, uh, anyways, that's what I wanted to share. Back it up. I wanted to show you, show you guys how to do that. All right, short and sweet. We'll see you later, 7-3.